At this year's APBA Gold Cup in Detroit, three drivers literally put the air in the Air National Guard Series. Mike Webster, J.W. Myers, and then Scott Lidico got their wings in a most unwanted way. Two of those boats have been repaired and are back in action, competing for the Columbia Cup from Tri-Cities, Washington. Sportsnet presents the Air National Guard Series. Today, it's the 47th running of the Columbia Cup for the H-1 Unlimited Hydroplane on the Columbia River from Tri-Cities, Washington. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Weber. Thanks for having us in for the race. Third event of the year for the Air National Guard Series. Dave Vilwak won the first two. He comes in off the Gold Cup win in Detroit. Here in Tri-Cities, Vilwak was the fastest qualifier and easily plucked 400 points with a win in Heat 1A. Steve David is second in points, qualified second, and he banked 400 points with a win in Heat 1B. Now, over the last two-plus seasons, Dave Vilwak and Steve David have combined to win 13 of the last 14 events, and those same two drivers have combined to win the last eight events here. They've learned how to manage the mighty Columbia River. But this weekend, those two veterans could be challenged by an impressive rookie, Jimmy Shane, who got 400 points with a win in Heat 1C. I raced here back in 2007, 2008, so I know uh, I know what the river can uh, can bring about during the heat races. It was exactly what I was expecting. The first turn was pretty lumpy. Everywhere else in the course was actually pretty nice, so um, it's exactly what I expected. So the weekend's off to a good start for some teams. For the other side of the story, here's my partner, Mike Allen. Thank you, Bill. This weekend, the river's flowing a lot quicker than the drivers would like. The Columbia is known for a rough first turn and some rollers down the back straightaway. Already this weekend, it's taken its toll on both man and machine. Veteran Kip Brown is on crutches after breaking his left tibia Friday morning when a steering problem caused his boat to snap out from underneath him. Nate Brown, Kip's uncle, will strap into the cockpit today. The river also robbed two teams of their precious propellers in 1A. Mark Evans sheared a blade, and the 2011 Rookie of the Year Scott Liddycote snapped his prop shaft and propeller off just behind the strut, warming up for 1A. And, Bill, that just shows you how rough this river is going to be today. You're right, Mike. It's going to be a challenge. Dave Vilwak was the top qualifier. Steve David, number two in qualifying. Jimmy Shane was fourth. There are the points after the first round of heats. Here's the event format. Three sets of three-lap heat races, six boats in the final, plus a trailer. As always, a big crowd here, and they get a bonus race, the Dash for Cash, that featured a test of some new green technology in unlimited racing. Steve Montgomery has the story from the pits. A very big topic in motorsports, biofuel. Scott Carson was president and CEO of the Boeing Company, involved in the introduction of biofuel in the airline industry, now doing the same thing in the Air National Guard hydroplane fleet. And Friday night, Scott, you put biofuel in Steve David's ride, the O'Boy oh Oberto, oh and that went pretty well. Yeah, it performed exactly as we had hoped, so that is very well. Uh, we ran about 10 degrees hotter than we thought we would uh, with the standard fuel, but the uh, performance of the boat turned 110%, so we're real happy with that. Now the issue is getting an oil company interested to produce it for us, so the cost of the fuel comes down. But I think uh, being here with the Unlimiteds is a big part of uh, making this public, bringing it to our attention and solving the problem. So it's one time out, one victory so far for the Obayo Oberto. <laughs> Very good, Steve. 95 degrees here in Tri-Cities. They're flying in the air and on the water. And Heat 2A when the Air National Guard Series continues. The 2012 Air National Guard Hydroplane Series is brought to you by Air National Guard. Visit GoANG.com to learn more about exciting opportunities in your area by Whispering Turbines, where life begins at 200 miles per hour. And by Peters and May. For professional management of your worldwide boat transport and logistics, remember Peters and May. Air National Guard Series on the Columbia River in Tri-Cities, Washington. Boats on the water for Heat 2A. And this heat features the top three in national points and the winners from Heat 1A, 1B, and 1C. Bill Rock, Shane, and David all with 400 points after the first round of heats. You can see the drivers fighting for position, and the big names are getting aggressive when they come to the one-minute buoy. 
You know, it's rough, so it's all about setup, uh, getting a decent start, trying to get into that turn, you know, absolutely with everybody or a little bit ahead, uh, and then getting into the good water in the back straightaway and try to grow some legs on the thing. But definitely getting through that first turn is critical. If there's six boats in ETs, it's going to be horrendously rough. So then it's going to be a, going to be a matter of trying to keep everything in one piece for another couple of heats before the final. And it is going to be a battle out there on rough water with six boats on the Columbia River. You see the Peterson May countdown clock. These are the GoPro onboard cameras. Shane has lane one. Bill Walk is in lane two. That's Steve David in the O'Boy Alberto Miss Madison in lane three. Then in lane four, it's Brian Perkins making his first appearance of the 2012 season. Greg Hopp is in lane five, and outside of him, you'll see John Zimmerman in lane six. Countdown clock inside of five seconds. Getting ready for the green flag on the Columbia River. The start is good. All boats are legal as they charge toward turn one on this very fast and rough river. We've got some of the best of the best right here, Bill. Lined up deck to deck going into the first turn. They'll walk in the middle between Shane and David. Oh! lifted that left sponsor. If that uh, skid fin was about an inch shorter, we would, whoa. John Zimmerman caught a buoy and it looked like he got forced out there, Mike. Uh, I think it was the domino effect, Bill. Starts on the inside and ends up, if you're on the outside, you're the last guy to get it. Everybody drifting out just a little bit each time. Exactly, with that rough water and those skid fins breaking loose, the boats are jumping out of lane. And Zimmerman's gonna have to pay the price. That'll be a penalty. We'll see what the officials decide. Here are your leaders. Jimmy Shane on the inside in lane one. Dave Philwalk in lane two. Through turn two and down the front stretch. Nice boat ride here, Bill. Jimmy Shane on the inside has got to be a little bit nervous looking over to his right, but he's about as solid as they come. Yeah, he doesn't look intimidated. No, he's not. When he straps in, he's ready to go win. It doesn't matter who's next to him. Dave Philwalk, 150.8 miles per hour on that first lap, and Shane right there with him. Philwalk has the lead through that rough turn one. You see him bouncing again. You see the boat almost literally jumping to the right. Yeah, Bill, that's uh, this Columbia River is infamous for that first turn. And those rollers, the way they come at you, there's nothing you can really do. You just got to ride it out. On board with Brian Perkins in the 21. Brian's first appearance of the 2012 season. Trying to pick up some valuable points here in this heat. He's got Greg Hop on his right. Now back up front, you can see Philwalk trying to stretch it out over Jimmy Shane. Shane has the inside lane, but Bill Walk has the horsepower. He does have the horsepower, Bill, and Jimmy's no dummy. He knows that this is just another heat. It's not the final. He's going to do everything he can to run hard, but yet keep it clean. But one thing Jimmy gets a kick out of is running against these two. Against Dave Bill Walk, against Steve David. Back on board, O'Brien Perkins in the rooster tail. It looked like that was Greg Hop on his outside. Wow, Bill, I tell you what, a uh, little bit more to the right, and he'd have been upside down instead of on the infield. He hooked it. Now he's going to try and get it restarted. Tough break for Brian Perkins. We'll see if there was any calls made by the officials. Can't really tell if, uh, if there was room for uh, Brian to get around this corner or not. You see him, he gets the engine relit. And he'll try and get back in this race, but he'll be well behind the field. There's Vilwak out front in the spirit of Qatar, on board with Dave Vilwak, looking for another 400. Whoa, what is that? Wow, Bill, unfortunately, that is not an afterburner. That's either a gearbox or the engine itself. Jimmy Shane goes to the lead as Vilwak coasts to a stop on the Columbia River. And Jimmy Shane, in his first full year in an unlimited hydroplane, is going to have a win in Heat 1C and a win here in Heat 2A and 800 points after his first two heats. Meanwhile, for Vilwak, huge disappointment, and it will be a battle for him to make the final here in Tri-Cities. 147.3, the average speed for Shane. John Zimmerman got a penalty but still came home fourth. A DNF for Dave Vilwak in the spirit of guitar and no points. Getting ready for Heat 2B, that's Nate Brown, and before he got into the cockpit of the Miss Red Dot, he gave us this week's edition of the Crew Chief Confidential. We're asked this question all the time on the U-17 Miss Red Dot. How do we get 3,000 horsepower all the way to the back of the boat where we spin a little 16-inch propeller? Well, the power turbine has a power turbine shaft that's attached to the PT. It stops about here. At this point, we have what's called a power output shaft that goes inside the engine that transfers the power to the motor to gearbox shaft. Here's the power output shaft. Here's the motor to gearbox shaft. At this point, it goes into the gearbox. 
Once it goes into the gearbox, it reduces the RPM from 15,500 RPM all the way down to about 9,500 RPM. From there, it goes out of the gearbox through this shaft. And by the way, all the shafting is made from Vasco C350, very high strength material. At that point in time, it goes back here to the coupler where we have a prop shaft that plugs into it. A keyway is in there where the propeller is torqued onto the shaft at 600 foot-pounds of torque, and that's how we get the power to the back of the U-17. And what's it feel like when you light it? All of that just equates to an incredible adrenaline rush. Dave Ilwak's going to need a rush to make the final back to Tri-Cities and heat to be in a minute. Huge crowd enjoying the Air National Guard Series here in Tri-Cities. 95 degrees today. So trying to stay cool in the Columbia River between the heats. Now uh, in the pits, guys are working hard. This is the spirit of Qatar. Yeah, Bill, these tail feathers are the least of their problems. These guys need to figure out why that thing caught on fire out there. It's either a gearbox or an engine they're going to have to replace. Going to have to work hard and fast. Remember, Vilwak with a DNF in 2A and no points. Meanwhile, the boats for Heat 2B getting ready, including J.W. Myers in the number 11. It's amazing this boat is back and running after it flipped in Detroit. Here's your unlimited access pass with Scott Rainey of Peters and May. Well, my biggest concern first off when the accident happened is that J.W. was okay. The second biggest concern was, you know, we got to evaluate what the damage was. We took a look at it, and yeah, we'd been through this before. I didn't really feel that it was anything that we couldn't, couldn't accomplish, but we wanted to show up here in Tri-Cities and have the boat look good and represent Peters and May, you know, in a real positive fashion. And uh, our goal was from day one, get this thing painted and make it look good and make it run like it had before. From the instant the boat was on dry land, it was all hands on deck to help out. We had our regular crew guys in there, but we had a lot of help from a lot of other people. Sponsors showed up, uh, pitching in wherever they could. We had family members show up. We had friends show up. Anybody who, you know, felt they wanted to help us, they just they just came and helped. And it, was it was pretty great. We had a lot of support from a lot of great people. It's good that that help was free because this was an expensive undertaking. It probably totals upwards of $100,000, maybe a little bit more than that in damage. Uh, but we overcome that. We look forward and keep moving, you know, move ahead, move on. So in the, in the massive effort by a race team to fix the boat, we had to cut all the damaged deck off this left sponson, uh, about eight feet worth, and then replace it with new carbon fiber deck, plus some of the framework inside was damaged. All the above water stuff, the cowling, the uprights and the rear wing, that stuff was all torn off and uh, we didn't have spare parts in any of that stuff. So in a matter of seven days, we had to build all this stuff that usually would take, you know, two or three months to build. A rebuilt boat was not the only result of all that labor. A sturdy team bond was forged as well. This is a great team. I'm glad to be part of it. Well, let's have some fun. Thing. Keep doing our thing. All right? Let's do our thing. Come on. Let's represent Peters and May positively. Thumbs up. Great team. Great teamwork the past two weeks, you guys. Good job. Here we go. One, two, three. Eleven! Eleven. And the Peters and May unlimited hydroplane ready to go with JW in heat 2B. JW third in his first heat, so he needs some points. And on that rundown, you see there, Scott Lidico, a DNF in his first heat, so he's also desperate for points. You know, Scott Rainey almost made it sound easy the way they put that thing back together. He made it sound easy, Bill, but believe me, there's a ton of man hours that are involved. There's a lot of work that you don't even get to see when it's talking about the structural integrity of the hull. You just see the cosmetics, but there's a lot of work to get this thing back on the water. Peters and May countdown clock inside of 10 seconds as they make the turn and head for the start finish line. You do not want to jump the gun. It's going to cost you a lap. J. Michael Kelly on the inside. Green flag in the air. All boats are legal. The start is good as they charge for turn one. Well, Bill, looks like J. Michael pretty much nailed that one. He's got a pretty good head start over these guys already. That's Scott Lenico in lane two. Not a good start for Scott. It has not been a good weekend for him so far. He qualified third, but not much luck since then. From the Whispering Turbine Skycam, you see the boats going through turn one. And you see J. Michael Kelly pulling away on the backstretch. This boat is fantastic in the turns, but now maybe finding some speed and some handling on the straightaways. You know, they've struggled with that, Bill, since they built this boat brand new last year. It is wickedly fast through the turns, but they seem to be off on the shoot speed. Maybe they've got a package here with a prop and a gearbox that's going to make this boat quicker all the way around the race course. It's on board with Nate Brown, driving for Kip Brown, who was injured here on Friday. Kip broke his left tibia when his boat spun out from underneath him, so it's Nate in the boat today, and he is in a battle with his longtime rival, Mark Evans. This is for third. 
stayed on the inside, but Mark trying to catch him. Now on board with J.W. Myers, and you heard Scott Rainey tell the story of how they repaired this boat. You can read a lot more about that at h1unlimited.com, and remember, always follow us on Twitter and Facebook as well. You can see the front wing work in there hard. Yeah, Bill, he's trying to get that thing up in the air. He's looking for speed right now. Look at how rough it is out there, Mike. That's the typical first turn. Doesn't matter what lap, how many boats, there's going to be some rough water. Wow, look at that one. These guys really working hard, hanging on. There's J. Michael Kelly in the Beacon Plumbing. He's your race leader looking for 400 points, trying to punch his ticket to the winner-take-all final. Oh, he lost the Cowling. Wow, Bill. And up, uh, there goes Scott, who just caught it. He found it, yes. And behind them, Mark Evans in the 57, and he's going to have to go around it. All boats look to be okay. How's this going to affect the handling of the 37? Shouldn't affect them at all, Bill. They're just lucky that when that cowling came off, it didn't take out the rear wing as well. Now, does he know it left? He does. The crew's either told him, or he's probably seen it in the mirror. <laughs> Well, it's not affecting the way he's racing. He is out front here on the Columbia River in Tri-Cities, taking the white flag and heading for 400 points, but that boat's still light. Still airing it out, Bill. Cowling or no cowling, he's giving it all it's got. And look at that. Even when you're leading the race, it's still rough in that first turn. That's because you have the six boats out there, and near the end of the heat, you can still feel the water roughed up from the guy that's running last. That's true. It doesn't take long to make a complete lap around here, so you're coming right back in your own wash. Going through the field, that's Scott Liddy Code in second. On board with Nate Brown, who's going to be turning wrenches. He's turning the wheel this weekend. There's Mark Evans in the 57. Again, you can see how rough the water is. J.W. Myers in that rebuilt Peters and May machine. Ryan Mallow, his first start of the season, driving the Fred Leland Unlimited 2 and really getting a rough ride in that boat. Bill, that's the difference from being out front, leading this race, and then being in the back. That's a tough way to make your debut in 2012. Check and flag out. J. Michael Kelly has the win and 400 points here in Heat 2B. Fastest lap for J. Michael, his first lap over 145 miles an hour. So 400 points for J. Michael Kelly, 300 huge points for Scott Liddicote, followed by Nate Brown, Mark Evans, J.W. Myers, and Ryan Mallow. The spirit of Qatar team trying to make repairs so Dave Dilwak can gain some desperately needed points when we come back to the Columbia River. third stop of the season for the Air National Guard Unlimited Hydroplane Series. We're here in Tri-Cities and the ANG presence very strong and for some reason they love the gyro ride. Meanwhile, how about that ride for J. Michael Kelly? J. Michael, that was an excellent heat win. You're not the fastest boat out there. You had to do what you had to do to go out and get lane one. Yeah, definitely not the fastest. Um, lane one's very important when you're about 10, 50 miles an hour off from the rest of the guys. You get those fast guys stack up, stacked up on the outside and that cowling, I'm going to have to have them hook up a Switching the boat or something have, so I can have a breakaway calling because it, it really comes alive when it comes off every single time. And they've got it back. They've got some work to do. Probably have to find a replacement calling. We'll see how that pans out as we continue. Now, take a look at the points after the first two rounds. The top three guys are good, but from Dave Vilwalk on back to say Scott Lidico, you got seven guys going for four spots. Scott, second place finish was pretty strong, but uh, you also had to deal with some extra debris out there. Yeah, I guess it was a uh, lap two on the back chute. I saw J. Michael's cowling go in the air. At that point, you just really can't move too fast to avoid it, so I just hope it didn't do much damage. But just a little bit of damage here to the front sponsor, nothing on the top end, everything seems to be all right? Yeah, it seems like everything else is fine. I was worried, you know, the rear cowling or the rear wing, but nope, they're all good, so we'll put a little bit of paint on here or something. Pretty it up and we're ready to go. The air show is a spectacular part of the Tri-Cities Waterfathers, and it features a wide mix of airplanes. One of the best performances is provided by the Air National Guard aerobatic pilot, Lieutenant Colonel John Klatt, who is part of the cast of this week's Air National Guard Spotlight. Because of his incident in Detroit, Mike Webster is only here in Tri-City, serving as a driver's representative. But he also had a chance to do a different kind of flying, courtesy of the Air National Guard. All right. Hey, hey Mike. Mike. What's going on? Good morning. Hey, good morning, John. John Clatt. How's it going? Good, good. Ready to do some flying? I'm ready. Let's do it. Ready to get this thing on? Oh, yeah. 172 Juliet Kilo, and runway 30 at Alpha. Clear for takeoff. Flat runway heading. We're going to go over the hydro course and then southwest on a high back inbound for landing. 
because I've always wondered, you know, what it's like. I've been on airline flights and really wanted to know what it was like to be one of these acrobatic airplanes. That's basically negative 1G right there. He told me he was going to give me a ride, so he asked if I wanted the easy or the hard, and I said, well, we're going to do it, let's do it, and uh, it, it, it didn't disappoint. Double snap right, one, two, to inverted, left pedal, snap left, six parry. All right, that's kind of a crazy one. He communicated and made sure I was doing okay after every maneuver and uh, asked me if I wanted to try some more and we kept going and uh, eventually at some point, man, I broke out into a cold sweat and I said, uh, let's <laughs> let's hold off here and head back. Do you want to land right away or are you feeling better? Uh, I'm feeling okay. I don't want to do any more loose balls, but doing all right. It was just a great opportunity for us and I thank the Air National Guard. They uh, provided that John Clatt. It's a, he's a class act and a super guy to work with. Mike then introduced John to the world of unlimited hydroplanes. It's an amazing feeling here. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm feeling like a fish out of water though. You know, uh, flying F-16s in the Guard was a wonderful career. Everything that I have has been attributed to my training, the skills that I learned. You know, they taught me how to be a pilot, then they taught me how to be a fighter pilot, and the skills transitioned right into aerobatic flying. Every day I wake up and pinch myself that I get to do this, and, and I take it real seriously. Thanks for bringing me out here. Fun, uh, fun to see what you guys do. Uh, you know, again, thanks to the Air Guard for putting this thing on. Absolutely. It was fun to see this course about 50 minutes ago from from a thousand feet or less. Now I get to see what you guys do. It, you know, attached to the water. Well, thank so, you, John. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And here are some more people having a lot of fun. The autograph session held every Air National Guard unlimited hydroplane race. And the drivers have as much fun as the fans. They do, Bill. Don't get me wrong. You get to meet just about everybody that comes to this race. T-shirts, programs, anything you want, these guys will sign it. But they're here to go racing, and Heat 3A is coming up, including Scott Liddicoat sweating it out in the 88-degree men to see if he can make the final. The Air National Guard Series under the scorching sun in Tri-Cities, Washington at the Columbia Cup Regatta. And we are ready for Heat 3A. And there are a couple of drivers in this heat that really need some points. Coming up on the one-minute mark on the Peters and May countdown clock. Looks like all boats are illegal there. And they head down the backstretch, scoring up for 3A. And take a look at the lineup here, two guys that really need to score some points. John Zimmerman in the nine and Scott Liddicote in that 88 degree men. They've really got to run well here and then hope some other guys have some trouble to make the final. Yeah, you know, Bill, there's there's not a lot of heats to get the points you need to get into the final. So every heat counts. So when you get a DNF, which means you didn't even finish, you didn't get one point, this is almost like a final for these guys. On board there with Nate Brown, there's Liddicote in the degree men. Lost a prop shaft in his first heat, did not score any points as Mike talked about. Oh boy, here we go, Bill. <laughs> this is why you got to get up there with him at the start, whether you're early or not. Boy, this is going to be tight to the line. Five seconds on the Peterson May countdown clock. Oh, that looked close, Bill. Yeah, we're going to have to look like J.W. Myers might have jumped away for the official call. Anyway, we're underway in 3A. J. Michael Kelly has the inside lane. Here comes that head of steam on the outside. Look at Mark Evans. That thing is flying. He really loves the long way around, but that's the way that boat was designed to race. Just inside the out-of-bounds buoy. He's on board with John Zimmerman. And there's your race leader, J. Michael Kelly. 33-year-old driver in the Beacon Plumbing. Once again, Bill, I hate to keep reiterating this, but this isn't the fastest boat on a race course. So what does the inside mean? The inside right now means you're getting the fastest way around this race course over everybody else that's faster than you. It's a little less rough inside, but this river is really rough today. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, it's inevitable when you get down to this first turn, you better plant the wing because it's coming. J. Michael Kelly coming around to complete the first of three laps. There's J.W. Myers, the Peters and May machine. Scott Liddicote making the pass on the outside, and we have gotten the official word. J.W. Myers did jump the start, so he will have to run an extra lap, and that is a tough break for those guys after they worked so hard to get that boat here after the flip in Detroit. Liddicote looking for points. J.W. now really in some tough water. 
Yeah, look at this one, Bill. Not a whole lot of room here. That's Zimmerman trying to make the move on the inside. That's really close. Good driving by both of these guys to keep it off of each other. And that's a big pass for Zimmerman. He really needs those points. Although, remember, JW is going to have to run an extra lap for jumping the gun. Up front, J. Michael Kelly. First lap, 144.9 miles an hour. That's down a little bit. And you can attribute that to how rough this water is getting. Scott Lillicote in the 88 runs in second. He'd love to have the 400 points, but he might have to take 300 and then hope he makes the final. On board with Lillicote. With the distance he has here, Bill, you just want to play it safe because you can't get in the final if you're upside down. So Scott's doing just what he needs to do to get enough points but not push this thing to its utmost limit. Watch these talented drivers dance these boats down the front stretch on the Columbia River. And watch how rough this water is in turn one. Look at that, Bill. Holy cow. There was a 20-foot section right there where J. Michael Kelly didn't even touch the water. He, the boat literally flew out of the water. Flew out of the water and skipped out at least a lane. Mark Evans in the 57, still running on the outside. There's J.W. on his left. Now on board with Nate Brown. Whew, all over the place. Look at that, Bill. You know, it's all you can do to keep these things in the lane when you're going through a corner at that speed and you've got these rollers to deal with. It's next to impossible. Even with that huge skid fin, it's, it's really hard to control that boat when the water is rocking you back and forth. Skid fin works great when it's got water holding it. But once she comes loose, then you're out of lane at least. J. Michael Kelly coming to take the checkered flag, and this time he kept the cowling with him. 400 points for J. Michael Kelly. And this is the battle for fourth. And this is a couple of veterans really going at it. Nate Brown on the right. Mark Evans on the left. Here comes that shoot speed, Bill, on the outside. It's going to be close. Oh, looks like Mark got him. Now take a look at the points. 400 for J. Michael Kelly. J.W. Myers was penalized for encroaching on John Zimmerman. And yes, Mark did beat Nate for the position. 3B coming up from Tri-Cities. The Air National Guard Series in Tri-Cities, Washington. Why is Scott Lillicote smiling? Because he got a second place finish and looks like he's going to make the final in the Columbia Cup Regatta. Now out on the water, the boats are milling for Heat 3B, including the 100 of Greg Hopp. It's amazing this boat is even running because watch what happens when Greg leaves the dock. Here's why you don't stand behind an unlimited at ignition. Watch this. could see the fluid coming out of the exhaust tube. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there, Bill, but uh, as you can see, she lit pretty quick, and uh, he's about to go out in a Fred Leland barbecue special here. <laughs> you could see the crew on the dock trying to get him to stop, but not Greg. He's a racer. He's ready to go. Can't pass that yellow buoy in the right-hand corner of your screen before the clock gets to the one-minute mark. Looks like everybody's safe this time. Looks like Bill Watts in trouble, though. Through a rooster tail, and that's going to put out his fire. Bill, that's called putting out the flame, and unfortunately, he's going to have to relight this thing, and with 48 seconds, he's going to be late. Boy, he's going to have to make up a lot of ground, and remember, Dave battling back from not scoring any points in an earlier heat this afternoon. He's on board with Brian Perkins. Our GoPro cams on the rear wing. There's Steve David and the old boy Alberto Miss Madison. Looking for another 400 points, and Jimmy Shane loves the inside lane in the Graham trucking. Here comes Bill Wack, but with 18, 17, 16 to go, he's going to be coming with a head of steam, but he's going to be way back. A head of steam, Bill, and he's going to be in slop the whole way. Makes a tough job, even tougher. Jimmy Shane coming to the line, five seconds to go. He's going to have to slow down, or he's going to be early. Steve David's got it timed right on the mark. Downside to that, Bill, is when you back off of one of these turbine engines, you don't have the response to pick up the speed like you would in a car. And he's paying for it now. Steve David takes the lead as they head for turn one from the Whispering Turbine Skycam. There's Brian Perkins right next to Greg Hopp. These two drivers have a history from earlier today when Perkins spun out while racing side by side with Hopp. Steve David leads. Jimmy Shane runs second in the inside lane. On board with Shane. Getting a good boat right there. There's Dave Dilwak way back. And you have to remember, he's not really sure what he's got because last time out he blew a gearbox and the thing died on him. That's true, Bill. This is like a test session here for them. They know they're going to be close, but they're not getting a true feel for the boat because they're not out front in clean water. 
Side by side for the lead. Steve David with a slight edge on Jimmy Shane. If you notice, Bill, this is the third race in a row. The Alberto team has been running that snorkel up top. You normally run that in the salt water. That's correct. And there are two stories as to why they're running it. One is because it gives the boat a little better balance. The other story is eh, it makes the other guys think about what we're really doing. Back into this first turn, Bill. I hate to keep bringing it up, sound like a broken record, but look how rough it is. It's going to take its toll today. Look, here's another one. Brian Perkins threw the rooster tail of Greg Hoff. All he could do to hold on to it, and there was nothing he could do. And Perkins is slowing to a stop. Dave Vilwak makes the pass, and that's a huge pass for position for Vilwak, trying to get enough points to make the final after failing to finish in heat number two. Back on board with Jimmy Shane. Good shot here, Bill. Look at that wing all the way down in the rear. Jimmy's trying to pack as much air as he can underneath this hull to get it to float around those turns. Every time you see Jimmy Shane, he's running with Phil Walker. He's running with Steve David, and this is his first year in a full-time ride. He likes running. Does he know how good these guys are? Bill, he might be quiet on shore, but he knows exactly who these drivers are. And now these guys are finding out how good he is. They are, just quite the opposite. They're finding out real quick who Jimmy Shane is. Back in that really rough turn one. Well, there's trouble there for the five. Looks like the rear uprights have separated. He's still got the rear wing on because that's where the camera is mounted, but he's definitely got an issue. You see how low that wing is on the transom of the boat? Yeah, Bill, basically, I think he uh, popped both of the uprights, and they're just sitting there flapping in the breeze right now. And you have to wonder how long that camera is going to stay along for the ride. Jimmy is not lifting, still trying to chase down Steve David. There's the Graham trucking. Look at that upright vibrating. Now it's back up in the air. This, this wing's leaving. There it goes. You can see that coming. Good shot here, Bill. As you can see, Jimmy's still packing air. But he's not going to catch Steve David. Checkered flag in the air. A win and 400 more points for Steve David in the Oh Boy Alberto. Greg Hopp was penalized for encroachment. He finishes fourth. Ryan Perkins did not finish. Now, take a look at the standings after the preliminary heats. The top six drivers are in the final. Greg Hopp starts as the trailer, and look how close Nate Brown was to making it. Now, earlier I asked Beacon Plumbing owner Billy Schumacher to assess his race team. I'm very happy. I think Jay Michael has done a fabulous job of driving the boat. I'm real happy for Beacon Plumbing. Uh, they just came on board with us again this year. And we're starting to get back to the winning side of things, and it's a good feeling. Do you have good feelings for you for this course, this place? I always have, yes. I, I did win it back in 1967, and I have raced here many times after that. I don't think I had quite as good a luck, but uh, it's always a fine place to race. The water's decent, and the weather's always nice, and the people are great. Well, the people are great, but the water is not so nice, and it's really hot, and crew chief Tom Anderson has a lot of work to do if Jimmy Shane's going to get his first unlimited win. Columbia Cup Regatta Final. 90 degrees is the air temperature. It feels like 97 degrees as we get ready to go racing. Boats heading out on the water, including the five of Jimmy Shane. Remember last time out, all that damage to the rear of the boat. I talked to his crew chief, Tom Anderson, during the repairs. Tom, I know you're in the middle of this thrash, but tell us about the damage and the repairs you've made. Well, basically, he just hit a hole out there that was hard enough to just pop everything we've got back on the rear tail feathers and the wing. They just all blew right off the boat. But uh, we carry spares for it, so the Graham trucking's going to be just as good as new for the final. And the final begins long before the green flag. Watch the boats as they troll toward the one-minute buoy. Three stories to watch for. They'll walk with the gearbox incident earlier today. Jimmy Shane coming off the repairs after his third heat, and Steve David jumped the one-minute buoy here last year. A heavy penalty cost him the win. On board with Dave Vilwak. Bill, with this move right here that I can see coming up, this is going to be a wicked final. Look at this. Wow. You've got to have 30 feet in between these two boats, or you can just make your own lane. And it looks like Vilwak put out his own fire there going through that rooster tail. I'm afraid he did. That was just too much water for that engine to consume. You cannot pass the yellow score buoy before the one-minute mark. We're just about there. Looks like Steve David's early. Look at this, Bill. I've never seen anything like that. Jimmy Shane had to go outside to make sure he was legal. And I don't know if Steve David had the five-boat overlap to come over. 
Going to have to wait for the official call from the referee in the helicopter high above the Columbia River, but it looked like Steve might have been early. Now down the back stretch as they get in their lanes. There's a look at Jimmy Shane on board the Graham Trucking, looking for his first career unlimited hydroplane win. That's 2011 Rookie of the Year, Scott Liddicote in the degree men. 30 seconds on the Peters and May countdown clock. We can see Bill Walk has caught the field. He's got his lane. That's on board with John Zimmerman. He's trying to catch the field. He's way back. That's on board. J. Michael Kelly has the inside lane in the Beacon Plumbing. Going to bring the field around. 14, 13 seconds to go. It's six boats for five laps on a two and a half mile course. Remember how rough turn one is. Bill Walk and David have combined to win the last eight races on this course toward the green flag. are good. The start is legal. They charge toward turn one. Hang on tight. Look at this shot, Bill. When they get down to the end of this straightaway, they're going to be pushing 200 miles per hour. This is what you call hauling the mail. J. Michael Kelly, one career win in Doha in 2009, has the inside lane. Steve David waiting to find out if he was early. Look at that. That's exactly where you want to be, Bill. You want to keep that spray just on the left-hand side of that windshield, staying off the rooster tail to your right. On board with race leader J. Michael Kelly. That's Jimmy Shane. He runs second. He's in lane three. Oh! Kelly getting some air. Yeah, a lot of air back there, Bill. He knows he's in contention to win this thing. He's not going to back out. Still waiting for word on whether or not the six was early, and you know these two guys are probably hoping. That's exactly right, Bill. They're sitting there hoping that somebody on the radio is going to tell them that the six has gone before the one-minute pin. And we have received official word. Steve David was early at the one-minute buoy. He will have to run an extra lap. So this is now the battle for third. Dave Philwalk looking at Scott Liddicote. Philwalk in the spirit of guitar. Liddicote in the degree man. Right next to each other on board with Philwalk. You don't think he's trying to win this race, Bill? He just stood it up on its end about halfway down the track. There was no water at all. It was just front end of the boat in the air. No, when you can see that much sky for that prolonged period, you, you know you're in trouble. On board with your leader, J. Michael Kelly. You see Steve David racing out front, but he's been penalized a lot. Here's your battle for third. Bill Watt taking the position from Liddy Coat, who catches some air. Racing all over the Columbia River. On board now with Bill Watt in the spirit of Qatar. He's got a long way to go to catch the leaders, but if anybody can do it, he can. Jimmy Shane in the Graham Trucking trying to catch the leader, J. Michael Kelly. And Bill, by now, his team has already told him, look, this is the lead, this is the battle. Worry about the boat that's next to you, the one that's out front, let him go. That's the Graham Trucking of Jimmy Shane. To his left, J. Michael Kelly, that's for first. Steve David runs ahead of these two, but has been penalized, he'll have to run an extra lap. He's not a factor in this race right now. Now, what's difficult here, Bill, is you got to decide what you want to do. Do you want to get inside of uh, Steve David and get clean of water? There goes the cowling for the second time off the 37. Now, once again, Mike, that shouldn't affect the handling of the boat. No, it shouldn't. It shouldn't affect the speed or anything. It should be just fine. It's pretty much cosmetics. He won a preliminary heat after the cowling left during that heat. And getting back to my point, Bill, Steve David could have a tremendous effect on the outcome of this race. Jimmy Shane on the outside has to determine does he want to go inside of Steve David or stay where he is. On the other hand, J. Michael Kelly on the inside knows that all he has to do is hug the buoys and keep it the shortest distance around the race course. They both got rough water, but Jimmy Shane's going to have rougher water. He is going to have rougher water, but you can see what he's already doing now, Bill. He's hugging it as close as he can, but yet keeping his propeller in clean water. And for Steve David, his point is, well, I may have been early, but I'm going to show you what I got in this boat. Yeah, he's just flat out showing him that he could have won this thing. It's a shame he had to go out that way. For the lead. Jimmy Shane has the advantage, but J. Michael Kelly has the inside lane through that rugged Ooh. turn one. Jimmy Shane almost putting it up on its side there as well. Just about everybody's had problems with this corner. And here comes Bill Walk in the spirit of Qatar. Can he catch the two leaders? Going through the field, there's Scott Liddicote in the degree man. He's fallen off the pace. John Zimmerman finished fourth in Detroit, was hoping for better things here, but he's had a rough afternoon in the final. And there's Steve David, who was early at the one minute buoy, will have to run an extra lap. He's in front of the field, but he is not the leader. On board with the leader, J. Michael Kelly in the inside lane. Here comes Jimmy Shane again. Look at these two closing the gap on each other, Bill. 
Steve David is out of the way enough now that Jimmy can start to come over. And look at these guys just flying these things. And this is why you have to come see an unlimited race, 200 miles an hour. It will take your breath away. Here we go, Bill. What do you think they have left to deal with? One of the worst turns that we have in all of racing. Down in this first turn, they know they still got to get through here. There's no painted lanes on these waterways, Bill. These guys are just doing everything they can to get through there as fast as they can and as safe as they can. And you're hoping your boat doesn't skip out one lane. No doubt, Bill. We've seen it all day long here. Half a lap from the finish. On board with J. Michael Kelly, looking at race leader Jimmy Shane. That boat in front of them, Steve David, has to run an extra lap. Not a factor in the race for the win, but he could determine the water conditions as they come through the final turn. So J. Michael has to hug these buoys as tight as he can. Jimmy Shane has to hug that rooster tail of Steve David as tight as he can. But this right here, Bill, this is exactly why you strap in as a driver. It doesn't get any more exciting than this. Out of the final turn for the final time, J. Michael Kelly right there, one career win. On his outside, Jimmy Shane looking for his first career win. Coming to the finish line, checkered flag in the air. Oh, looks like Jimmy Shane just got him. Shane is the winner. I don't think he knows. We'll go back and tell him. The 2012 Air National Guard Hydroplane Series has been brought to you by Air National Guard. Visit GoANG.com to learn more about exciting opportunities in your area. By Whispering Turbines, where life begins at 200 miles per hour. And by Peters and May. For professional management of your worldwide boat transport and logistics, remember Peters and May. Well, fans from the Tri-Cities of Kennewick, Pasco, and Richland, Washington are heading home after seeing one of the most amazing races in the history of the Unlimited Hydroplane Series. This was deck to deck, right to the checkers. Jimmy Shane on the outside, both drivers flying their boats, and it's Jimmy Shane, but not by much. Here's Mike Allen. Jimmy? I think you got everybody standing on shore here. <laughs> they said you're supposed to be a rookie, but I don't think you are. That was amazing. You know, I, I went out there with all the confidence in the world, knowing that the crew did their job. They repaired the rear wing right on that last heat before the final. I knew everything was going to be set up just the way that it was before. And I went in there just thinking, you know, we can do this. I went in there with full confidence and knew I had to get a good lane. Lane position was key, key to this final. And that's what I focused on. Huge win for Jimmy Shane, not eligible for Rookie of the Year, but his first full year in an Unlimited. And his winning margin over J. Michael Kelly, two-tenths of one mile an hour. J. Michael, that was a battle from start to finish. How close was it? Uh, probably a foot, if that. You know, it's pretty tough, though. Just, you know, not very many come your way when you get an opportunity to win. Um, you know, got guys like, when you're racing, it's guys like Bill Walk and Steve David, who, you know, pretty much dominate all the time. But, uh, you know, I would have liked to have had to win, but at least I got beat by Jimmy. I like Jimmy. I think he's a great driver. I think he's obviously shown at these last three races. Dave Billwock leads Steve David in the driver points after three events. Check out the team points on h1unlimited.com. Now about Billwock's run in that final heat. We just got flamed out again. You know, it's just we're going to have to change the inlet system and stuff like that because it's in a good place there. And, you know, we had the Alberto on our hip, could have ran the other guys down from that place you know in lane three but uh thing just flamed out so we'll make some changes this next week and be ready for seattle jimmy shane and mike kelly congratulate each other meanwhile mike allen is with a disappointed steve david steve take us from your spot yeah i'd really like to see the video i mean everything really fell into hand for us and we had so much speed on everybody out there but i'd, I'd really like to see the video because uh well, I'd just like to see the video. <laughs> and he will. That's Chief Referee Mike Noonan on the right explaining things to Oberto team manager Charlie Grooms. They're disappointed, but the fans loved what they saw. They loved what they saw, Bill, for two reasons. Number one, that was one of the most exciting finishes ever. And number two, the future of the sport is here, Bill. We just saw two young guys give it their all and do one heck of a job. J. Michael Kelly and race winner Jimmy Shane putting on a show. Hey, be sure and follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and visit us at h1unlimited.com. For Mike Allen, Steve Montgomery, and all the men and women around the course and on the crew, I'm Bill Weber. Thanks for having us in for the race, and we'll see you next week in Seattle. Congratulations to Jimmy Shane.